Welcome back to the channel. In this video, I will show you how to interpret a CBC in just a few minutes. Now, CBCs are part of daily labs for patients, and it's important to monitor in many clinical situations, which will be discussed. Please don't forget to like and subscribe to this video. It helps with the YouTube algorithm so that this video can show up for more people. Now, a CBC is simply a lab test that provides information about the cells in your blood. So your red blood cells, your platelets, and your white blood cells. Now, this information can help with diagnosis and also monitoring patients. Now, for the red blood cells, one of the main things that we look for in the CBC is the hemoglobin. Hemoglobin is simply the protein in your red blood cells that oxygen binds to, and then it is carried to vital organs. Now, let's see some of the causes of an increase in your hemoglobin. Please keep in mind that hemoglobin will increase whenever there is a high demand for oxygen. So, for example, somebody with lung disease, where the pathophysiology makes it hard for oxygen to diffuse from the lungs into the blood, right? So there's a decrease in the amount of oxygen your body's receiving. So when this happens, your body's going to produce more red blood cells, which will also lead to an increase in hemoglobin. So like your COPD patients, your asthma patients, they usually present with high hemoglobin levels. It can also be elevated in certain cancers. So for example, polycythemia vera, where there's an increase in the production of the blood cells in your bone marrow. So smokers follows the same concept as there is decrease in amount of oxygen that's reaching your bloodstream, so your body makes more red blood cells, therefore your hemoglobin increases. And also when you're dehydrated, what happens is that you have a decrease in blood volume. So it usually makes the cells in your blood more concentrated to give kind of like the illusion that you have extra cells, right? So decreased blood volume increases the concentration. And now for patients who present with low hemoglobin. First thing we think about in this case is usually anemia, right? Where the patients don't have enough healthy red blood cells and therefore a decrease in hemoglobin is the result. Blood loss, right? That's kind of straightforward. In kidney disease, your kidney is not making enough erythropoietin, so it can't go in the bone marrow and stimulate the production of red blood cells, which will lead to a decrease in red blood cells and hemoglobin. Cancer. Now you may ask, how can cancer lead to an increase in hemoglobin and also a decrease in hemoglobin? So cancer usually affects a certain cell line, right? So cancer can affect, let's say, the cell line that makes your red blood cells. Right? So you have an increase in these red blood cells. And the reason why cancer can also cause a decrease in your hemoglobin is because like, if you have a cancer of, let's say, your white blood cells, right? One of your white blood cells, it crowds the bone marrow, right? Your bone marrow starts producing a lot of these white blood cells because of the cancer. So these cells are going to crowd the bone marrow and utilize the nutrients required for other cells to be produced. Traditional chemotherapy is not targeted, right? It basically targets anything that divides fast in your body. Your hair cells, the cells in your GI, the cells in your bone marrow, all of those cells get attacked by this chemotherapy, which could cause them to decrease. So next on the CBC is usually the hematocrit. So the hematocrit is a percentage of red blood cells in your blood as a whole. So because of that, it follows the same concept as previously discussed with the hemoglobin. Next is the mean corpuscular volume, which refers to the size of the red blood cells. So usually in clinical practice, it helps us diagnose patients with anemia, right? For us to determine what the anemia is due to. So for example, when you have smaller size red blood cells, it's usually due to iron deficiency. And when you have larger red blood cells, it's usually due to B12 or folate deficiency. Next on the CBC are the platelets. And for the platelets, the levels are usually higher in patients with anemia, simply because there's a decrease in the number of red blood cells and the blood volume. It may give that illusion that you have higher levels of other cells, right? So for example, platelets. And in patients with polycythemia vera, it can also increase the amount of platelets being produced. Now, a decrease in the platelets levels are usually seen in patients with autoimmune diseases. Patients who have ITP, idiopathic thrombocytopenic purpura, and patients who have TTP, thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura. In patients with cirrhosis, it leads to a backup of blood in the spleen. So when you have an enlarged spleen, 
usually you have platelets trapped in there. So this will cause a decrease in the amount of platelets in your blood volume. In patients with aplastic anemia, where the bone marrow cannot produce any cells at all. So they usually have low everything across the board. In patients with cancer, right? So like I said, certain cancers in the bone marrow crowd the bone marrow so that it prevents other cells from being produced because the cancer cells are utilizing all the nutrients. And medications can also decrease your platelet levels, chemotherapy being very common. So sometimes you may hear the term CBC with differential or CBC with diff. So that simply means that on the CBC results, right, the white blood cells should be divided into monocytes, lymphocytes, basophils, eosinophils, neutrophils separately with your own value. If it's not a CBC with differential, it usually just gives the result of the total amount of white blood cells. So for the white blood cells, I mean, we all know it's usually higher in patients with infections. Um, patients with cancers also, right? Because depending on the type of white blood cell it affects, the levels of that white blood cell will be high. Certain medications can also increase your white blood cells. In patients with decreased white blood cell levels, so patients with aplastic anemia, patients with cancer, right? We kind of explained this already. Medications, right? Certain medications can reduce the levels of your white blood cells. So for example, chemotherapy can reduce the levels of your neutrophils. And that will be the end of this video. I hope you could utilize this information in school, on rotations, in your residencies, or even in your clinical practice. If this video was helpful, please make sure to hit the like button. It helps with the YouTube algorithm so that this video can reach more people. And subscribe for more videos like these. And if you have any questions, please leave it down below. Thank you for watching this video and take care.